Clear the Wild with Matt Becker, John Norris, and Greg Shaley. He literally predicts his own death. Oh, really? He literally does. If you listen to it, he says, you know, it's not here, it's the afterlife, da-da-da. And he goes, uh... Take it to a higher floor? No, but no, it's worse. Because then he goes, uh... No, he goes, you're trying to figure out your life, whatever. And then you go to Dr. Feelgood, your psychiatrist, and he gives you pills. And he goes, don't let the elevator take you down. And he died on an elevator. Oh, my God. That's right. I mean, literally, when you listen, we were listening to it in the car. And I go, let's call John. No. This is good. (laughs) It's a good start here. I'm not kidding you. It literally was amazing. It's all there. And they said, Hold, hold on, hold on. Put your headphones on. Jesus. Hello. There he is. Oh, my God. Hey, John Norris. Hey, guys. <laughs> Greetings. Greetings from Discord. Oh, straight from the Discord circuit board. Yeah, and uh, you were uh, on your phone, right? I'm on my phone. How does that sound, Becker? It sounds great. It sounds great, right? Yeah. Okay. So I think that might have been the cause of uh, the last recording we, we made, which that oh, yeah, will like, yeah. never see the light of day. <laughs> it's too disjointed. Yeah, but it's. I mean, if people can read between the lines, I feel like our fans <laughs> stuck with us long enough that they they know what's happening, it, even when we're offline. It was really a uh, like a nonlinear conversation between Becker and I that you kept interrupting. I just kept showing up <laughs> and saying things like ten minutes too late. Yeah, <laughs> where were we? That's that actually doesn't even sound like a. Uh, it sounds like every podcast we do. So I don't know. <laughs> no, what we did last time was we played what I like to call word jenga. Because it would just pull certain words out, and you'd have to guess what they were. Hmm. That could be a new idea for a podcast. See, it's that just sounds all good. scrambled. You have to, it's all scrambled, and you have to download it and then put it together. Right, like uh, that uh, Skidoo. It's Sk- interactive, interactive <laughs> podcast. What's Skidoo? Skidoo, you know, the little game where you have to figure out all the letters there. I thought Skidoo was the thing where you had a, they're like bowling pins and you had a uh, ball and it was oh, on a string. Oh, remember that? Yeah. It was a you string and you, it was like it, a yeah. pendulum. And what was the name of the game where you had to put the ball on the two wires and you had to go ooh, in and out until you could get it all the way to the, like 10? No, you try and, yeah, you, yeah. you'd, uh, as the ball would slip down between the two rods, yeah. you'd, you'd push the rods back together and it would kind of ramp it up. Yeah, it would do that. Mm, it's kind of like uh, kind of like backwards skating. How you do that momentum yeah. thing? <laughs> do a little hip. I feel like you're you're both wrong. Skidoo is Groucho Marx's last movie. <laughs> it can't be both. It can't, yeah, yeah. Nope. They came out the game because of that movie. There was a game though. No, a skidoo. A skidoo yeah, is the. Uh, is the. Am I, maybe I'm spelling it wrong. Skidoo. I don't know. S K A. Oh, hey, let's do this. See. Now we're, we we just want everything to show up right away. We have to be better at it. Uh, our searches. You know what I started doing too? I searched with images. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, because then you see it and you go, "Oh." Because okay. people are dumb and, sh- and machines are smart. Wow, this yeah. is nothing in here. What is that fucking bowling game? Uh, I think it's just called John. They're they're like tabletop. they're like pins, and they're like uh, about four inches tall. And they're, uh, they're, they're not like a bowling pin, but they're like, uh, thinner at the top, wide in the middle. Yeah. And they set on a, like a, like a bowling pin or like a bowling, uh, setup. frame set up with, with, uh, 10 oh. pins. And then you have a, uh, a ball on a string that's suspended right above it. And you drop it and it, and the pendulum swings right into it. Yeah. That's definitely not called s- ski do. <laughs> <laughs> Not according to you and Google, yeah. but Becker's Becker's on the fence with yeah. me here. I'm like, I'm going. I think it just didn't add enough O's. I think it had five O's. <laughs> they didn't used to pay for type like they yeah, do now. Yeah, now everyone that was a hand that was handset type back then. We'll find it. A lot of bowling games. Yeah. Oh, Ooh, that one looks that fun. One's, oh, with yeah, that slingshot. Yeah, <laughs> that's goddamn brilliant. It was it was a pendulum though, right? Yeah, and it was a ball. See? Yeah, you swung it, and then remember you just tilted the game to reset the pins. Another job we lost in America. <laughs> this looks like <laughs> this actually auto- automation. Yeah, you know my mom. Uh, she actually she she had a when she went to school when she went to college she had to live with her aunt and they were they were they were ruthless and uh, her dad would always make she'd go home to Wisconsin she went to school in Nevada. 
went home for, for uh, summer break and her dad would always wait until the last minute, like the night before she would leave to let her know if he was going to pay for her to get on a train to go back to school. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and and when she went back to school at the University of Nevada, I mean, this was our family uh, secret. The uh, the the aunt or, or my uh, yeah my aunt, <clears throat> she full blown lesbian, and was living with two other women, and they had a very they were very fucking kick ass lesbians. It was like Three's Company. If T- to- Jack but, yeah, Tripper was a girl. Ex- yeah, and they're all girls, right? <laughs> and they're all yeah they very they very much look like. Uh, uh, volleyball same, coaches same from haircut. the 60s. Same haircut as John Ray. Oh, totally. But she scared the shit out of me. And my mom would tell me stories about when she lived there, she would have to take care of everything at the house. And she never knew what the fuck was going on. And at one point, my mom told me that, I mean, she, she kept to herself because she always wanted to go come back because she was, she liked going to school at the University of Nevada. Tight as a clam, that one. <laughs> but there, and she always kept every, the, the aunt kept, track of every single thing that she paid for for my mom yeah it was, it was i go man how did how did you do this she goes well i had a job i go what was your job she goes i worked as a pin monkey <laughs> she a she monkey. loaded the pins that oh. sat down in the back of the bowling alley this was her solace to be in the where the where the balls hit the pins and they go in a, flying and they around go flying. and where is she at she, when that happens? She's hanging up like in the like in the That's in the, the monkey rig, part, in, right? In the rigging, yeah. she's hanging in the rigging to drop down the pins, like like quickly put them in this so no one thinks so, so everyone thinks that wow, the, look at how it's awesome it's automated. automated. <laughs> Oh my god! I go well. That's probably how you you learn how to turn things out. <laughs> Do you have like a shield? No, there. I, I don't know if I. Could, I wish I knew we were going to talk about this. I'd, I'd look for a picture. I've seen things uh, in the past. I've done but like they little just hang searches. On a pole there, well, no, there, there's like a like an area for them to hang, and then the pins come up, and they and they got, grab them, and they, and they sh- throw them in the chute. Okay. You know, would it be so logistically? Would it be like one person? Doing like every lane, or no? Would every you like would probably person? do two lanes. Yeah, yeah. there's you, like, no way you're yeah. doing your own lane. <laughs> but you do your. You have a lane on your left and a lane on your right. We can hire two people for ten lanes. <laughs> Tell the new kid he sucks. <laughs> hey, Jeremy you didn't make it. You're covering four <laughs> lane four and five and eight and nine. Fine. Did I see? Did Eric complain? Did I hear complain? Because you could be deported. Oh, here's okay. So here's the old picture. Oh. Uh, but that's when I think they just picked them up and put them in. Yeah, this is where they're like standing they to the side. Yeah, they call pin setters before they got a union. I mean, there, <laughs> somebody needs to make a movie where it's like man versus machine, where there's like a, a bowling alley owner who's like, oh, "My my pin monkey will beat your robot any day." Oh, here's, yeah, could, here's I bet that was a contest. Here's why they called them pin monkeys. Uh oh, <laughs> were they black? Well, it seems like they're in the south. <laughs> oh, so it's, it's racist. Another I mean, race I, my mom wasn't black. She considered herself a proud pin monkey. <laughs> yeah, well, you know. Some... I mean, she didn't. That wasn't the shame of the family. <laughs> yeah, Sammy Davis was a Jew. <laughs> this is weird. They used to really. Uh, hey, John. I mean, I mean, oh, here it is. Oh. See, see where they're setting up. Maybe this is the way. This is the way she did it. Oh, so they came oh, and they so pushed them back and you set them in. Here, John. I'll send you the, a photo of the. Oh, I'll just. I know what I'll do. I'll, I'll let you see it. Uh, there's a. There's basically trays, and as the uh, pins get swept back, you throw them in the trays, and then the trays feed down into the uh, the setup. I wonder what the timeline was. Like you have twelve seconds. <laughs> 12 seconds, and then pin comes in upside down. You're like, I got to turn it. Oh, shit, my wrist. Now you're working it's with like, one it's hand. Like, it's like working at an Amazon warehouse. <laughs> He's no, this is like the future of Amazon. Yeah, this is how. Well, this is where they started it. <laughs> Do you want one thing or 10 things? 10 things. Oh, hurry. <laughs> and then and then there was that, that, that short period of time where they electrified the floor. <laughs> That's where uh, bumper cars came from. Yeah, but I wonder if they work things like if you're hungover, you go to your work, you're your pin, your, your pin monkey. And you're sitting there going, uh, I'll give you $2 if I can have the gutter girl lane. <laughs> <laughs> she just keeps guttering. She don't have to do shit. Pins stay up the whole time. Uh, I couldn't have done it without her. Hey, John, did you see the, did you see the picture there? Yeah. Okay. I didn't know. That was a they feature look, of uh, Discord is that I could show you my screen here. They look, <laughs> they look real pale and unhappy. <laughs> yeah. They don't. I thought when he said here, that. Here's the other one that I was looking at. Okay. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah, that's, that's more. St- Type. Um, I bet that was more of the 
what they started that, with. That, that poor dude is just down there getting bowling balls thrown at him. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. He's probably just like, look, you got to bring your own crate. <laughs> is that an arm thing? Does he lift himself? He's, yeah, when he they probably bowl? lifts himself yeah, up. And then, and then he has to throw the ball down too on the side. That, uh, look at the balls. He looks, oh, those like, are those little, yeah. They look like uh, carnival game balls. Mm-hmm. Hey, John, here's another one. Look at these guys. Look at these poor suckers. <laughs> the boss is up, uh, standing on a, an yeah. elevated area. You got to jump out of the way. Well, remember the movie, the big, the big bus where that, that huge, like exaggerated bus went cr- cu- uh, cross country and they had a, they bragged that they had a bowling alley in it and the bowl, it was, it was like a Leslie Nielsen movie. Okay. And then there's like people waiting, watching the bowling game, but they're standing in the gutter. So when the ball's returning to throw again, they have to hop up <laughs> as the ball comes down the gutter. The big bus. You don't remember seeing that movie? No, I don't. Oh wow. Is it like the uh Yeah, it is right the there. Long. Look at this thing. Oh, that is, oh wow. That's a, big, that's a big bus. Was it real? That's was an a, that's the actual picture of the bus. This was a this was a practical bus that went down the road and it was uh it was it was kind of like in the seventies when they had that uh Oh my God. This is, shortage. this is in Spanish. This might be a bus in Mexico. Yeah, that looks That's like That's very it. similar. <laughs> I didn't know it was a documentary. Yeah. <laughs> People go, we should build one like the movie. <laughs> was this a Oh, Stalker movie? Channing was the, uh, the head. Uh, see, this is a very, uh, look at the picture oh, here. Like it's a very, lady. it's a very uh, airplane feel where yeah. the head stewardess no, comes look up. At and, the same outfits. And, yeah. You know. 1976. <laughs> Stalker Channing. So a movie- uh, so a movie studio was like, we want a movie like Airplane, but we got to cut the budget by yeah. a lot. <laughs> yeah, something that that uh, most of America will uh, identify with because th- most of them don't fly yet. Is that supposed to be a rocket engine on the That's back? That's some kind of f- funky thing on the back. Yeah. It's so funny because you go to some of the back lots of the studios back in the seventies and the eighties, and that bus would just be there. They didn't know what to do with it, but they didn't want to get rid of it because someone – they keep a lot of things. but They get rid of stuff, but, uh yeah, that would be sitting there forever and until someone decided they wanted the space for some palm trees or something. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? Put the chariots over there. If forever I saw – there's – in Hollywood, you see stuff – just off the side of the road because they just have little lots. Those are homeless stuff. people. Homeless Greg. people. But then now, mm-hmm. now, but uh, the big bus, the first disaster movie where everybody dies laughing. Oh, they drive <laughs> off the they tell them Louise. I don't know. It I looks can't like it, the picture, the poster has them falling off a cliff, Greg. This is going to be like me, like, like waxing poetic about dig dug. And then I, I bring it up on a, on a, on a screen emulation of the, of the old version of Dig Dug and I play it for two minutes ago. This fucking game sucks. I can't, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't know if I can watch the whole movie. I like the idea that it's there. Cool looking buzz. Is yeah. It, I've never heard of this movie. Is it available on anything? Oh, I, I'll find it. Oh, I, yeah. I got the right. Apple I, thing. I yeah. I forgot. Well, I do want to say, uh, that, uh, I just got back, Chase and I just got back from, uh, Monster Palooza in Pasadena. And, uh, it was way more, uh, comic book and collectible, not comic book, collectible and, uh, horror fan, which was great. And they had tons of people signing. They had, uh, Paul Servino was signing for a couple of days. He, uh, for uh, Law and Order? Yeah. No, no, from, yeah, was, was he in Law and Order? Oh, he ended yeah. up quitting because he didn't like being outside at night. His <laughs> vo- no, his voice. He's, he's, uh, he's like, uh, cause he was in, uh, that rock opera. Okay. John, do you know what that one was? Do you remember? The rock opera that Paul Sorvino was He was in a horror rock Come opera. Come on, John. You'd know this. Oh, fuck. oh yeah. It Feels was, like something I should know. Uh, no, he was in it, and uh, so was... Uh, this was back when uh, when uh, uh, Paris Hilton had a little juice. She was in it, and it was a horror opera. I mean, the line to, to see... Okay, so he, these are the people that were there. There was... Uh, um, Linda Blair was there, by the way. Bunch of people, a bunch of guys who, who, who were in the, uh, the costumes for the Godzillas. <laughs> Paul Servino had a huge line. Uh, Corey Feldman, Sir Corey Feldman. Oh, you mean, uh, death threats? Almost <laughs> somebody tried to inject him with AIDS. He had a fucking line yeah. that went out the building and down the fucking street. I'm like, are you serious? How much were, how much was it? Well, I don't know what his autographs were, but, um, there's another gal, Feruza. 
She's in a bunch of the like stuff from the nineties and stuff. She had a long Fruza line. Volk? Yeah, Fruza Volk, Volk was there. Um, the, oh, the three people from Rocky Horror Picture Show. I mean, there was a lot of people signing, yeah. which I don't do these the signing things yeah. right. Meatloaf but was Meatloaf there? Meatloaf was not there. It was uh, three, Fuck. three, two gals, and then the um, the dude. The dude uh, opposite Suzanne Sarandon. Susan Sarandon. Oh, the 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 male the, lead. The male. Uh, he was in uh, Kim, the, Kim Kim Curry's body. Yes, but it was um he was in he was in one of the uh, the nineties sitcoms where he was a mayor with uh God what's his name? Fuck. Oh, Spin City. I think it was Spin City. Oh, might have. Been. Anyway, uh, nice yeah. nice enough guy. He sat there. He was he was. <laughs> Reading Swear to God, this is like, man, this Hollywood sucks, man. <laughs> He's got a, a two pairs of underpants, the tidy whities and he has signed them. And there's a sign next to it that says, Hey, I'm putting two kids through college. <laughs> it's like, man, <laughs> you were on top of your game. You had a sitcom. Yeah. You had a movie everyone can quote from. And now you're signing. He's tidy selling whities. underpants to, to a weekend. He was, he was, he's a good enough guy. He was, he was there all weekend. But, uh, who was the other person? Um, the rock opera. I'm trying to, I'm all over the road here. The genetic opera. That's what it's called. Repo, the genetic opera. Uh. Paul Servino was in that. And I think that was the connection with the, uh, with the horror people. So, uh. So wait, he, so Paul Servino quit Law and Order to Repo Horror Rock Opera? No, he quit, uh, Law and Order because he didn't like the hours. He was doing a lot of stuff at night and he was fucking with his voice. That's what I remember seeing that on like ET or something. His daughter ruined the Godfather. The connection, the connection to being here at the, at, or to being at, uh, Monster Palooza was, uh, Repo, the genetic opera. Do you think he regrets dropping out of Law and Order? I don't think As so. He's... How, how much, really? okay, how much would you, if you stood in line for Paul Servino's autograph, how much would you be willing to pay? First of all, now- this is a very hypothetical. Yeah. <laughs> I'm saying five dollars, but I know it's ten. Then I would pay, I would pay fifteen dollars to have somebody stand in line for me, and then I would give Paul Sorvino five dollars. So I'm willing to put up twenty bucks. The going rate that I saw, because it, it's usually and it's it's like come on, this is Hollywood. There's a fucking there's a FedEx Kinkos everywhere. Get get someone. Get a, one of your assistants to print something out. F- make this look good. It's in scrawl, <laughs> like with a sharpie. Didn't you know you're gonna be here? It's forty dollars to get a, oh an autographed eight by ten and a line of people. And you're around the I mean, like all day long signing as, and having someone there put like me like pushing people along so we can go drinking. Mm-hmm. This is pushing people along because there's a line that's gonna that's gonna be there until What's they the leave. What's cut for the venue? The venue gets none of that. Uh, the venue's gotta get no, something. Venue gets none of, of the, of the, uh, fee. Oh, that's great. And, uh, it's $40 for the 8 by 10 Which, I mean, for some people, it's worth it. Uh, it's also $40. Why though? It's laundry, Matt. <laughs> it's also $40 if you would like to take a picture with your own camera. $60 if you want to sign 8 by 10 and a picture with your own camera. It's $50 if you have anything that you plunk down in front of them for them to sign. And there's more money on top of that. If you want a personalized uh, greeting, it's another 10 bucks. That is fucking nuts. You need accountants just sitting there going, oh, what do you got? We got a salt shaker. <laughs> Look Who's it up. got the pin that signs salt shaker? <laughs> Extra $5 for the pin. <laughs> do I get the pin? No, That's you don't crazy. get the pin. And Corey was there, I think, on Friday Friday night. He was only there. Did they have, in, a, needle? In, in, Did they have a needle drop in dude, the line before you get to it? It was fucking no joke security for him. It was for, and it, he, for Corey Feldman. Oh yeah, but it's like, but if you're just walking through the path, you mm-hmm. can walk like as far as I am to you, Becker. I walk by the table because there has to be a path because it's, it's down a hall. We went twice. <laughs> it's free, <laughs> <laughs> but it was just because I want. I was like, what if you had eye cams? You could just take a picture of Corey oh, Feldman totally. for free. So I'm looking. I'm looking. I'm going. Well, there's two like big like these bodyguards aren't bodyguards. They're probably the best. They're the guys who look like. They're the best. Like bodyguards. Like they play bodyguards no, no, on movies. The bodyguards that are best are the ones you don't notice and they're right. closest and they'll be able, they won't let anyone get near. These guys are guys who are like wearing like jackets that are way too small for them and then like, like with their arms folded in front of them and like just glasses at night in the, in the venue. Greg, right? these are the type of bodyguards that let their client get stabbed by a <laughs> syringe. Exactly. In, yeah. In traffic, no less. 
<laughs> like you couldn't drive away? Yeah. So he had no less than three that I saw. And uh, one of them was just out front, like where I kept walking by, because th- they, he was probably getting people yelling shit. So, I mean, it comes with the territory when you start <laughs> making shit up, right? Yeah. Uh, another guy that was there that was really popular was uh, Danny Trejo. Yeah. See, he would have been interesting. I don't know if I'd pay 40 bucks, but. I don't know what he was charging. He was really I would look cool. really close at what he was signing and now I'd duplicate it. Well, he's got Trejo tacos. Yeah. And Trejo donuts. And they're like little, uh, shops and very popular. But it was really, uh, really shocking to me because he jumped out from behind the table and while we were walking down the path and everyone's like, Danny, over here, over here. He walked over to, to talk to someone in another line. And when he walked by me, he was shorter than me. <laughs> I'm five seven. Th- that's machete, man. <laughs> I thought machete yeah. would, you know, what the? F- he, no. I'm five seven. Literally, he was an inch shorter than me. Yeah, he's not even a vat or what he was. <laughs> what? <laughs> you going with that? No, no, no. no. Go, go, go. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just, uh, it's, it's, uh, I've always heard the things about Tom Cruise being short and other people having to stand on boxes, Apple boxes and stuff for the, for the shoot, but Machete, I, I, he was, it's Machete. Mm-hmm. Did you, did you think he was like a seven foot tall Mexican? I thought he was at least six feet. He's five, five, dude. St- still a hero in my book. Still a hero. No, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Everyone loved him, man. It was really cool. So yeah, that was, uh, that was that. The, the, the main thing that, that I did, uh, I really enjoyed, which I'd never do, is they had an after party on Saturday night, and uh, Rick Baker got an award, like a Lifetime Achievement Award. And uh, we're watching this thing, and there's this, uh, this, this, uh, this uh, cover band, but it's all uh, horror. It's, it's, it's all right. It's, it's pretty over the top, right? Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, he goes, the, the, the guy, whatever his name is, uh, John Revolton or something like that, <laughs> And it's just him and like three guys, you know, but he's like the main dude and he's got the stripper girls dancing on the side. It's a good show, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm not used to staying this long to these things. We go in and get a fucking overpriced drink and we go, fuck this. And then he goes, Hey, everyone, bring out, bring out Slash. Fucking Slash from Guns N' Roses comes out. And I'm like, come on now. I've been fooled before. Yeah, this is Hollywood, it, yeah. right? He better look overweight. And, and I'm like, yeah. nope, that's him. That's fucking him. And then all of a sudden, John Landis comes out and fucking David Naughton from the, the lead from uh, American Werewolf in London. And they fucking present Rick Baker with an award. And Rick Baker is like, they're telling stories about him and they're telling personal, like just one, they moved it. It wasn't one of those things where it kept going like a wake or something. Mm. And it was, it was, they told a good story each. Slash says, I'm just a huge fan. And one of my favorite movies was, you know, Rick Baker was, was the uh, special effects artist. And then Rick Baker came out there and I'm going, fuck man, it's, it has taken 20 years, but I finally have attended like a rap party at one of these conventions <laughs> where it was actually, it was done okay. And Rick Baker was really fucking cool. I mean, it just, he's just done everything. I mean, thriller, fucking, um, it, uh, have you seen, uh, well, thriller, I wrote some down here. <laughs> thriller, uh, Grinch, the Grinch. He did the oh, makeup in the Grinch. Wow, okay. American yeah. Werewolf in London, obviously, with all, all right. those effects. Uh, there was a movie that I've seen, and it's like a total B horror flick called Schlock, and I think John Landis had something to do with it too. Yeah, that's John. That's John. John Landis directed that. So what? what that's what he. Did, that's the one he did before. I think he did that before American Werewolf. Yeah, I don't know. It's about it's about a gorilla, right? Yeah. I'll put a link up to that because I'll probably watch that. I'll, when I kick out of the big bus. <laughs> yeah. I'll, once, I'll go right once, over. Ten minutes into the big bus, you'll be like, what was that Landis movie? <laughs> so that was, uh, yeah, that was, that was a good week. I didn't really didn't buy anything, but we just got back from the other convention. Oh, that's what the joke was. Yeah, I forgot. Yeah. <laughs> what's it? Johnny Trejo. Or what's his name? Trejo? Uh, 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 Trejo. Yeah. yeah. Trejo. Yeah. He's. <laughs> Danny Trejo. Uh huh. You've been thinking about the joke this whole time. Yeah. You want to just save it for the end? And we yeah, can put we'll it save after it for the, the end. We'll, we'll put it at the end after, yeah. after the music. We'll do that. It'll be our Easter egg. We'll do that. <laughs> I'm writing it down though. Danny right. Trejo. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So I'm, uh, I'm done with, uh, conventions for a while. Yeah. <laughs> I'm you Blew your out. wad on the convention. Yeah. yeah. Dar studded. Oh, when did you see, uh, baby metal? Oh, I, I can't remember how I saw that. 
I was just uh, I was just looking around online one night, and uh, yeah, I don't, I was like, man, I, I can't sleep l- lately. Mm-hmm. I've been uh, I, I got real bad apnea, mm-hmm. but now I'm like I'm like. <laughs> this is how bad it was. Well, you were driving a lot, so no, that's no, probably this is, good. This is while we were we were in in the um we had an Airbnb and stuff, mm-hmm. and we were sharing it with uh, my brother Trace and I, and then uh, a guy who works for the does the computer stuff for Ghost Ride, and his wife and their their new infant baby. So they had the mother in law unit outside, <laughs> right? Oh, uh, what are you in the Senate? Well, <laughs> well, I'm like <laughs> I'm like wow, is that we're gonna have a new baby? Baby was fine, that's fine, but they stayed in the mother in law unit, which is detached, right? Well. In the morning, she's up early and she's, uh, she's, she's hears this noise and she comes over to, uh, her uh, husband, Chip, and goes, uh, hey, uh, I think there's a wild animal. We're in the hills of Pasadena. I think there's a wild animal downstairs. And he goes, what? She goes, I, I think I'm going to, I'm going to go down there and, and, and I'll let you know what's going on. Right. And she goes down there and she's in the house. Like I imagine her with like a, a rolling pin because <laughs> she doesn't know what's happening. She's it's cougar country. Right outside my door. <laughs> it's me snoring. <laughs> she was about to call the police that there's a wild animal somewhere in the house. Wow. That that's uh that's how that's how bad my snoring's got. So so uh I've been uh doing this thing where I uh turn a recorder on to listen so I record like how much sleep I'm actually, and like in 30 minutes, I'm getting like two minutes of sleep, and I wake up, and I just fall asleep, and I wake up, and I fall asleep again, and yeah, it's pretty bad. That is, I mean, so that's, she should have she she should have called animal control. That tranquilizer dart would have put you right out, right fucking out. That would have been great. But a rolling pin would have done it too. <laughs> rolling pin too. All of these great <laughs> the ideas. The idea you're going. I had this weird dream. I got hit with a rolling pin by a chick holding a baby. <laughs> Every time I walk into the Airbnb, it's like I'm breaking into Home Alone house. <laughs> <laughs> Did she have her baby with her? <laughs> yeah. So she was walking around with her baby, thinking it might be wildlife. No, 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 no. She. It, uh, it was when she went down. She was. She. She heard the noise out on the patio, and then she was like, kind of. Like, it's it's like a, a horror movie. We we're like, you're like, don't go in that door, but you have to she go went towards the noise. She went towards the with noise with the baby, and we already know because there's there's a uh, in the hills of Pasadena. There's there's a lot of wildlife out there. You can see it. Well, yeah, yeah. It's where the Mansons used to hang out. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember why I was talking about that. I just, but, but yeah. I just remember that story. But she was, uh, yeah, and, and she was very nice. She didn't say anything to me until, you know, Tracy brought it up. <laughs> Till you were awake. <laughs> Till I was awake. <laughs> Yeah, I haven't been getting good sleep. I gotta, I gotta do one of these sleep studies or something. Yeah. Those said those, uh, things are, you can get that app that will record all the things. Yeah. And everything, but they said those actually keep you awake because you're so concerned about what the app might think of you. <laughs> How many likes you'll get on your snoring. <laughs> you to gamify your sleep. That's the way you do it. Uh, but I like the idea of just recording yourself sleeping because then someday when you're gone, people are going to go through your stuff and just be like, Oh, Shaylee had like, he had 180 hours of just him sleeping. Just sleeping. That. Well, see, I'm going to do it because that way, you know, when if you die before your wife, then you can just have her play that at night. and She can pretend like you're still there. <laughs> and the new guy <laughs> will feel weird because he'll yeah. be like, I don't snore at all. Well, yeah, you get, I mean, you get used to it. See, there was a, I remember this, it was a, in 1964, I just looked it up. There was a film by Andy Warhol called Sleep. And it was basically five hours and twenty minutes of his friend sleeping. And it's just a it's just a close up of his face. <laughs> they re- later renamed it the Big Bus. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Can I film you? Yeah. Well, all right. What should I wear? He goes nothing. I'm just filming you sleeping. You know, that's like a weird, like, no, you can't. Then he does it anyway. Yeah. How are you going to know? <laughs> you wake up, there's a carry. Hey, I said no. <laughs> it's like, sorry. Yeah, I, 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 I don't want to have to go in and do a sleep study for them to go, oh, you got to wear this machine on your face. Yeah, the machine yeah. thing I think is a scam. I think it's a lot like those fucking sad lights they sell you. $600 <laughs> for a fucking fluorescent tube that they're growing marijuana with next door. <laughs> And you go, I paid 600 He paid $29 for a fucking garage full of them. <laughs> and you just hang out with your friends who grow weed. Just sit underneath yeah. that. You know, I, I mean, if I paid $600, i would be sitting there going, how's your mood? And I go, I'm still sad. Why? I paid $600 for this fucking fluorescent light. I'm <laughs> depressed. 
Those things are fucking, those are medical devices, dude. Yeah, oh, that's right. So our penis medical. pumps. <laughs> Get a penis pump, a satellite. You're all tad, tad and fucking low on blood sugar. With a penis pump and the satellite. Combine them. <laughs> That's the that's only way you're going to get any action uh, with that fucking apnea thing yeah. on your face. Yeah, that's... <laughs> you look like the fucking hunchback. <laughs> Pumping helium in your head. Phantom of the Opera, trying to get 20 winks. Yeah, I... I, don't, I don't, forget, don't forget to put your apnea mask in the dishwasher, Greg. That's... <laughs> I bet that's where a that. lot Life of action. germs... That's if you stay at an RBM or, or, or VBO or RVBO or whatever it is yeah. now. Yeah, just don't. If they got one there, don't use it. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's a great rule of thumb. It's included. Here's a, Becker's life hack. Yeah. <laughs> if you find chewed gum on the ground, don't, don't chew, chew it. it. <laughs> it's probably still good though. They probably, probably. Yeah. They might have coughed it out right after they started chewing. Yeah. No, they watched somebody else pick up gum on the ground, <laughs> put it in their mouth. And, oh, they hope their mouth's going to throw up and the gum fell out. And then you pick up theirs. It's just a, an ongoing thing. <laughs> Same piece of gum. A gum daisy chain. <laughs> <laughs> What have you been doing, John? Um, what have I been doing? It's summertime. It went from winter to summer in the span of a week. It's uh, it's in the mid fifties. Pretty nice out, hanging out outside. I mean, if you don't, if you don't mind getting robbed by gunpoint, <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty nice outside in Anchorage right now. Uh, uh, oh, I'll give you guys a, a Subaru update. You guys want an Alaska Subaru update? What's oh, the Subaru update? The yeah. Subaru. Oh, your the, your yeah. new Subaru, new to you, new to me. Yeah. Recording, recording studio number two. Yep. Uh, it's, it's alive. I got the, uh, got a lot of repairs done. Some head, new head gasket, water pump, timing belt, all that jazz. Uh, and it's running. I've been driving it around. There you go. See that? I told you. It's got a, it's got a cracked exhaust manifold. So it sounds like, uh, I have my own like motorcycle gang following me everywhere. It's pretty sweet. <laughs> yeah, you just stick stick more putty bondo on that. That's all that's required. That's that's not uh, detrimental at first. It's just, what, are you getting any smoke inside the uh, or any exhaust inside the uh, the cabin there? Uh, no, there's a, there's some fumes, but I don't mind. Cause <laughs> I get bored driving anyway. So. It's a cheap high. It's, it's not like a piece of the engine up. fell off and hit the window. <laughs> That'd be the worst if your engine if your engine blew and it flew through the window and sucked you out. That would be not ideal. I mean, you think Southwest? You think people are canceling their flights? But they're probably not sitting behind the wing anymore, or probably they're front loading the plane. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's where everyone sits anyway. We were flying on Southwest that morning, and I I read that article right when I got up and checked the news and see what's happening. But it I mean, it was on my phone, so. It, I didn't say anything. Tracy's a kind of a nervous flyer. Yeah. So I made a point not to say anything. But as soon as we landed in Phoenix, I go, so did you see that thing about South? <laughs> <laughs> I go, you know, I've been busting all day to tell yeah. you this because I wanted to say, yeah. you know, see, it doesn't fucking matter. You just get in the fucking plane. But yeah, she's like, oh, I'm so glad you didn't say anything. Yeah. Well, the thing I thought was, was weird was, uh, uh, everybody had to pay eight dollars to, you know, to stream it. What do you mean? They, they, they didn't have Wi-Fi, so they had to. Oh. They all went on when they said they were having an engine trouble, and it blew up. And they they all paid eight dollars so they could fucking stream. Oh, it. use the onboard yeah, Wi-Fi. Like no free Wi-Fi when the engine blows, people. <laughs> Read the fine print. You know, it's funny because when they dropped down, because they were they cruised between thirty-five and I think forty-five or fifty thousand feet. That's where commercial air flight takes place. Well, when they hit, when that the, the number one thing when that engine blew. Was to get down to ten thousand feet so they could get pressurized, pressurized right? right? Or they wouldn't didn't have to have a pressurized cabin. And the, the, the gal who was probably dead by then, but was blocking that door, you know, or the wi- the window. She was, I mean, she's blocking that, keeping everyone else from, you know, right. Uh, so don't pull her up. Yeah, don't pull her up, but get down, and then they can pull her off the thing. Well, at ten thousand feet, I think you can make uh, some some cell calls from that. You're down that low. You no commercial aircraft flies that low. Yeah, well, these people still pay the eight bucks. Well, they still. Well, you're yeah. not going to take a chance. Well, you you're not live. legally allowed to have your phone on when the <laughs> engine blows. <laughs> you not yet. Wait somebody, till we sue I them. Saw, I saw on Twitter somebody who was on the plane when they finally got off. Somebody took a picture of the plane and uh, they tweeted, "What a ride! We finally got off the plane. That was crazy." 
And I just assumed this must be a person who was like in front of the lady who got sucked out the window to tweet like, wow, that was a crazy experience, huh? Well, I think it's a lot, you know, uh, you have to wonder what people saw didn't. I mean, they knew what was going on, but there was only a few people, as you know, every time they say, look out your window, the Grand Canyon. (laughs) If you're not in those three seats, you don't get to see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, right. you definitely saw the wreckage and, and, and that awkwardness when everybody's getting off the plane because you're still going to grab your bag because you're not an idiot. And that one bag's left. And you're like, oh, shit. See something, say something. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Sorry, we shredded your computer. Yeah. Well, everyone else grabbed their bags. Mm-hmm. Are we supposed to not grab our bags? Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Everyone was coming off with a shoulder bag. Well, the other thing that was, uh, that was weird is, you know, the photograph that somebody took and put out. Every one of the people had their fucking oxygen mask on wrong. Totally. You've only yeah, heard that speech same. 900 <laughs> times over your mouth and over your nose. And they all had them like they were fucking talking through a fucking yeah. cup and like, string. Like it was nobody, an old. Nobody, uh, watches, nobody watches a demonstration. But, but it just shows you why education doesn't work. We can repeat <laughs> this a million times. You still don't fucking get it. <laughs> you know, you, you bring up a good point. Like if you were. Two rows, maybe even one row in front. Not two, because she died of blunt trauma. So there was a there was a there was a big noise and a lot of blood. So maybe a couple rows up and then a couple rows back. That's where you're really you're basically someone for the news right there. You're eyewitness. But like if you're in the back of the plane, no, you're not, you don't see shit. No, you, don't, you don't even know when they're serving food. Yeah. You know what I mean? And this if is a lady getting sucked out the window. <laughs> Her seat it's wasn't those up fucks right. in first class, Greg. It's the, the fuckers in first class that are just like, well, that was a bit of a bumpy ride. And meanwhile, all us poor folks in the yeah. back are getting sucked out of the plane. <laughs> well, the other thing is, and I think we all know this, is she didn't have her seatbelt on. No, she did. No, she didn't. Yeah, I read it today. I Blood read trauma. It. She was, she was going to be dead anyway, which is it's sad. But, I mean, could you imagine ha- hanging halfway out a window and, and having to survive that? <laughs> I mean, you've already fucked up. And then getting pulled back in. I mean, that window wasn't much bigger than the opening of, a, of the window itself. Right. Yeah. And, but I mean, uh, Greg, Chilean miner like, couldn't have got through that. <laughs> people have jumped out of planes and they had their chute not open and hit the ground and lived. So, I mean, anything's possible. True. Well, that one guy who died in front of us on a flight, Marco, it was, <clears throat> they were at the bulkhead and we were chasing our behind him and he was, his wife was hitting him on the shoulder the like most of the like when we were uh when we were on approach to land and i was like what the fuck is going on she keeps saying marco marco trying to wake him up but he's you know he's he's dead already and it was just nothing very peaceful just went and no one anywhere else except tracy and i knew what had happened because it was just one of those things in fact her freaking out didn't even alert the, the the stewardess. She didn't even say anything. No, that's I saw. We had a seizure one time, and it was like two seats in a corner from us. And uh, I look over, and we. I mean, I never ever saw the seizure thing because they, you know, people. Is there anyone with medical experience? One guy goes, "I'm in medical billing," so he's up there <laughs> fucking helping. <laughs> and, and I was like. I don't know if that's the number one guy, but yeah, so he's over there and they just kind of block it. I mean, you know that they block everything. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's kind of weird. Please use your emergency seat in the back if you're not in the first class. Yeah. Yeah. We flew, we flew into Burbank and a really weird thing happened. You could exit through the tail of the plane. Wow. That's Costa Rica yeah. does that. And we flew out of Burbank back to Phoenix. You could enter through the rear. So, like, all these people trying to get... <laughs> That's usually a San Francisco <laughs> thing. But it was like, oh, I don't remember this, because that those when I started flying regularly on my own, that was all kind of going away. Uh, John Wayne Airport, which is uh, uh, in Newport Beach, that's that's the last place I remember something like that going on, and that was a long time ago. But in, in Burbank, it's still such a tiny airport. And that's the just, coolest stuff. Yeah. It's fun, isn't it? Oh, you feel like the president. You're waving. Well, then you... Because you're going... Like, with Southwest... There's no seat assignment, so everyone's jamming in the front, especially after what had happened. They're all in front of the wing. And I'm like, well, let's go to the back. 
And then you'll get the first like overwing seat that you want because everyone's still fighting for the front because we were in the A group. Yeah. And I'm like, I, I remember those days where you'd have to walk up the, the gangway and get up there and yeah. Yeah. Costa Rica, we used to do that when we fly coach. We'd, we'd aim for the back. So you go, Oh, see. 31, 36, you know, as long as you weren't near the shitters. Yeah, yeah. But you go, okay. So that was a great scam. And then we did it once on a plane and we landed and they go, oh yeah, no, everybody out the front. And you're like, whoa, I didn't, I'm way in the back. <laughs> it's 110 degrees in here. Once they shut that plane down on a tarmac yeah, when yeah. in a hot country. Yeah, yeah. It gets hot quick. Yeah, you forget, but see, that's weird. You forget about all that stuff. So I'm, a, I, I don't mind walking out on the tarmac and oh. heading up there and. Yeah. Razor scooter. Yeah. You at least flying, know everyone can make it up the like, steps. Flying to like Bethel or Kotzebue or like any of these bush places in Alaska, it's like a, it used to be just like a free for all. Now it's a little more organized where you have to like actually wait in the line, but you still have to go through the tarmac <laughs> and go on. It used to just be like, they used to just be like, what's your name? Are you on a list? And you'd be like, yeah, probably. And then like, I hop on. And then people would just like, everyone would just go whenever they wanted. So like, like flying in Alaska, you're saying it was more like storming a castle? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people had people had like just all their sled dogs with them, just fucking Costco boxes full of food. Was there seating assignments or was it festival? <laughs> <laughs> that is Southwest festival seating. Oh my god, I'm so sick of that. Alaska Airlines the fucking worst. Uh anybody who's ever slept with a military guy. Uh anybody who likes the color red and is from Philadelphia can board. I go, I just walk up now and go, here, I uh I'm allergic to shrimp. <laughs> Let me on the fucking plane, you fucking retard. That's kinda how you take But the reason you don't wait is because if you wait, then they everybody every everyone's doing the which should be illegal. If you're gonna enforce all the stupid shit like seat really cause an inch back would have prevented that lady from fucking flying out the window. No. A bad plane caused that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, nobody's lived because their seat was – or didn't live because their seat was back an inch. Well, remember, you couldn't have headphones in for the longest time. Yeah. And Brendan Walsh had that joke where he'd always pretend that he was listening to something and mm -hmm. talk really loud. It's not on. No, it's not. <laughs> it'd be, it'd be like, <laughs> it's not on. It's not yeah, on. Not even. Uh, but now, I mean, you can basically be watching TV – while they're doing the, uh, the uh, pre-flight. The iPad thing talk. is great. You can continue while you're landing. Uh, have a great, everybody. Uh, a great flight, blah, blah, blah. And you're like, just shut up. I'm playing <laughs> poker. Go to hell. But uh, no, the thing where the people shove their bags in, that's why they want to get on first. Yeah. So they shove their bags up near the after coach, and then they just want to load it up. So then you get to seat 19, and you're like, it's fucking full. I'm back in 27 with my bag now. So I go, hey, whose bag is this? I'll pull it out and go, oh, you're back there? Here, take it back there, then, you fucking idiot. Why the fuck can't these fucking cocktail waitresses with wings organize this? My seat still has storage. You know, that that is the thing that I've noticed is that the it's just a breakdown of the the rule of law because at the – at the uh, ticket counter, when you check your bag mm -hmm. or when you check in and decide to take your roller bag with you, that person can go, hmm, hold on now. You can tell by – look. I can tell by looking at it, right. and I don't look at nearly the amount of bags they look at. And they let you go walk through. It could. They should just make the opening to go through TSA as big as it as, can be. As it can be. You have to, to shove your bag through it. If it doesn't – it should be like that game Ellen had where you had like contort your body like the wall that was coming towards you. <laughs> yeah. And, it, and if you knocked it out, well, if that bag doesn't fit through the thing – Fuck off. That's actually really good. And Greg. then do not when, call the airline. Then when they get to the fucking gate and they get in and they go ahead because they've got kids, so they get to go first. They have to fit through Clock. the kid thing. <laughs> but the they the person there sometimes they have to be the fucking bad guy. It's like you've had multiple chances up until when they're getting ready to get on the plane and stop everything because they have to leave on time or they get mm -hmm. fined. Right. If if any one of your other employees along the, would have made the check and said, that's not going to make it, this would have gotten taken care of an hour before takeoff. Now we're 10 minutes. We're going to be late because now someone, they need this fucking three bags and then their uh, Gucci yeah. paper bag. But don't they, don't, they charge, don't they charge more to check it at the gate? Th that's the thing is the I most expensive the real estate on that yeah. fucking plane is overhead baggage. And they let that go in for free. Yeah, no, but well, I mean, they're they're trying to change that too, because yeah. there's no regulation, obviously, or 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 maintenance apparently. But uh, 
the thing is, is they've always hated overhead baggage to begin with. And you're right. They could shut it down. But at the same time, uh, they're now at the point where, no, it's free, Greg. That, or, I'm sorry, John. Uh, that's a whole scam. So if you have an oversized bag and you don't want to put it on the scale because it's over 50 pounds, what you do is you bring it with you to the gate. Yep. And then you just take it and they go, we'll check that for free if you'd like. And you go, fuck uh, yeah. You well, can bring golf clubs if you put them in yeah. a baby carriage. No one cares that they check it from the fucking, from the, on the concourse. They care if they have to mm. check it in advance and it costs twenty five dollars. They're they're risking the fact that it's going to be a full flight. And I'm anybody gonna, like to check their bag, we'll yeah, do it for free. Exactly, go, they, perfect. They, they, they've created their own fucking monsters. Mm-hmm. What they've done, yeah. And now everyone goes, well, I don't, I don't have to. I can walk right through. I can put everything in there that I want. And and by the time I get to the concourse on the on the concourse in the jetway, they're going to say, if you fill out this pink thing, we'll make sure it gets to you at the end. And there's no rougher. Handling of a bag. No. That when you hand That's it the, the jet drop kick. And you goes, can watch them. It sometimes. goes down a chute and then tumbles. Yeah, and then a guy kicks it to the <laughs> other guy and then he paylays it into the plane. And Bicycle then you go, kick. And you go, I think I had uh <laughs> liquor in there. Could you be a little more careful? Yeah, I I I just it kills me because I never get stopped. I've I've got uh clear and I've got uh TSA pre check and I know how to dress to get through an airport. Right. I've done it once. Right, plaid. It's funny. Well, that doesn't hurt, but it is one of those things where it's like, like just, just act like you fucking know where you're going. Yeah. You know, you know you're going to have to go through all these hoops. Well, stop being a dick about it and wearing your fucking cowboy boots and a big fucking bunny buckle, and then guess what? You go right through. It doesn't. It doesn't have to be a fucking series of uh, unfortunate incidents all the way up until when you get on the plane. Old guys with knives still but Greg, amaze me. I- I have to wear my knee-high lace-up boots. <laughs> exactly. They're my good luck yeah, boots. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're not the ones with the zip on the inside. No. You have to no, actually no, no. lace them up but, all the But way. the best is when the guy decides to put his his his, his military-grade lace-up boots up to the ankle, his stormtrooper boots. He decides to lace them up at the spot where your bags come out. <laughs> and you go, sir, <laughs> you're bent over right in front of everyone. Just move over. These are the same people who can't figure out how to work a pickup for uh, people that land. Uh-huh. So they just the, the solution <laughs> is to just drive in circles. Yeah, circles. These are the same people that decided, "Hey, when your bag comes out, it's just going to end up like right here at this roller with, along these rollers and everyone's going to jam at the one spot in the front, not down the row. They're going to jam up in this one area so that it, everyone's like now that you're jammed up all the way to that fucking metal detector." Oh, yeah, yeah it's it's uh, it's 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 a it's so frustrating, and you know, at the same time, is I don't fucking know what the what the answer no, is either. I mean, sometimes travel goes easy because you're in easy mood, but when you're in a bad mood, boy, I'll tell you, travel can just yeah. Having a nice day? No, I'm not. Why? And they go, well, you know, you uh, you you took my bag, and then you said it went to Hawaii. <laughs> I didn't go to Hawaii. Why would my bag go to Hawaii? Had I known, I would have jumped in the bag. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's it. Send me to Hawaii by mistake. I I don't need clothes in Hawaii. You know what they're doing now is they're Tracy and I call it the Doug Stanhope clause. Uh, when they're doing the uh, pre-flight, they say like uh, the oxygen mask will da, 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 and they also they make a point to say drinking your own liquor on a plane is illegal. Is I illegal. know that was never yeah. in there. It's always been illegal. Yeah, it's always been, but we can't walk down the street it? here. That, we that hasn't been new. No, no, like no it's a, always been written. That's in, always been in, the, in case. the book. They've never said it before. Now they're saying it. It's the Stanhope clause. Yeah, and and you know we we well from Alaska. You, there's it's always every year. There's at least one story of too drunk got to get off the plane yeah. from Alaska. And having worked in the bars up there, fuck yeah, it's mostly it's mostly us and our friends. We know yeah. what that's like. You it's, drink up until it's that's why it's called the red eye. The red eye, yeah. <laughs> but but now they're doing it. I mean, this is coming from. I mean, Tracy has to have a couple of pops every time just to get on the plane. And at five thirty, when you're taking a flight out of <laughs> Phoenix or Tucson, there's no bars open, and if you, if you don't plan in advance. But she's getting on that plane, sauced. Yeah. Hopefully, for us all, right. everyone's going to enjoy this better if she can drink her own liquor. <laughs> Believe me. No, I actually like. Yeah, that's the reason. I, I mean, I bring the little bottles with me on carry on because, yeah, when you get to the two or three hour delay, yeah. you're not getting screwed at, you know, LAX. Uh, Nine dollars for a beer. Uh, it's the last call, and you go, well, it's eight. 
I have two more hours here. And they're like, last call. And you go, I get it. Can I get some fruit juice? There's a thing called, because uh, usually what I, I don't belong to, I belong to a bunch of the, the, the mileage clubs. And you get points for purchases and stuff like that. And then you can go into, if you are traveling on Delta and you have a Delta ticket or a partner, you can go into their club. Right. The, the Sky Club. But for me, since I'm not a, a, a huge platinum or anything, I have to pay $30. Fine with me. Cause there's free booze. Right. And there's, there's usually a good spread of food, right? Right. Well, in a lot of, like, Flying Southwest, guess what? South shocking, I know. They Southwest, don't have guess that? what? Southwest doesn't have one. But in Phoenix, this is a reason to go. I, 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 John, I assume you're uh, you're uh, installing a tape deck or something. Yeah, that's what that was. Okay, in Phoenix, <laughs> they are one of uh, ten airports where someone has now figured out. Hey, why don't we just build one of these and they'll come? It's called the club. Yeah, and you pay thirty dollars free booze for anybody. Anyone, you can be on any. And so you just not to, a big uppity. And and I go there, and I'm like, ah, oh, here we go. We're gonna. It's gonna be jam. No tie required. Like, no. I go. Uh, <laughs> the lady in front of me is like taking way too long to to like be indignant about the fact that it's uh, it's a 45 minute wait to get in. I'm like motherfucker. I go. Okay, I'm just gonna go through this. Hey, I'm not really sure how this works. She goes. Oh, uh, well, there's a 45 minute wait. No, no. I'm paying. Oh, come come right in. Mm-hmm. Mr. Paying Customer, we would pay $30 each, me and Tracy, $30 oh, yeah. each, $60. I had two and a half hours of uninterrupted drinking, Wi-Fi, snacking, and, and edited the last Stanhope podcast while I'm there, which, oh, come on. Come, that's a tax that, deduction. And Save all, your receipts. We're flying Southwest. So all of the so, bars out in front of all of the, the, are, the, the, the gates are $10 are a pop. Packed yeah. full of people. And $10 packed. a pop with bad service. What? So you're like, so three drinks, we'd each be in. Totally. Yeah. Without food. Wait, what, wait, what's the, so what's the 45 minute wait? So some people, there was a, a way to get in. There was a, uh, a club, a, a, an exclusive club that you paid for. And it was one that could get you into a bunch more it called a premier package or premier club. And it was separate from Mars, but it, you all had the uh, same entrance. Like British Airways blocks out that spot from right. three to eight in the evening weekdays or something. Weird. It's because they have, they have a, a flight that goes, a connecting flight probably going to you, the UK and back. So we were, we were fine. We were flying out before three o'clock. So it didn't matter. I'm like, what, what was that lady fucking bitching about? I'm like, oh, she paid like a hundred dollars a year to be included in all these things, and then wait forty five. We left, and she was still sitting on the fucking thing out there. She uh, still wasn't in. See, that's that's it. You, you remember, it's one of those things. Just study and go. Am I getting my money back? You go. Yes, you absolutely. Will. Yeah, but you know that you said that. That's the point that you made earlier. Is that uh, it, it can it doesn't have to be a stressful event if you know how to pack, if you know how to fucking dress. And you know how to fucking take it easy when you're there. It's it can be a breeze. I mean, I've had fucking bad it's, days flying. We all have. It's yeah. the people that make it bad. <laughs> other customers, it's, you're right. It's just like prison. It's the other people <laughs> in there. That make it. If they were all like you, prison would be not so bad, right, John? Yeah, this could a very this could be a very pleasant experience for everybody, <laughs> but some people are trying to rape other people, and it's just not cool anymore. <laughs> <laughs> the club at Phoenix. It's like prison without the rape. <laughs> Be cool, bro. <laughs> yeah. That's a great billboard. Welcome to Phoenix. We hope you enjoy prison. <laughs> what happened with you, Becker, while I was gone? Uh, so what did we do? Uh, so Becky's back. Becky uh, takes off and takes care of her business. Uh, cutting hair. She has a shop and uh-huh. then she's got people that work stations, mm-hmm. but she owns a shop and yeah. she is now working it out to where she goes up, uh, two weeks on, two weeks off or yep. something like that. Yeah. She's getting to that. And so Slope it's, schedule. Yeah, slope schedule. exactly. Everyone down here can't understand it, but then a couple of Alaskans <laughs> down here go, Oh, like the slope. We go exactly like the slope. Take their money, bring it down here and spend it. Yeah. It's fucking brilliant. Just like the slope. And, uh, yeah. And so then, uh, other than that, we've been, uh, just do work in the house. We are going to paint the house. So this is the thing. John, you know about uh, Becker's house, right? It was painted. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. So what's you're painting it again. You're painting well, over the over camouflage, the, the camouflage. pink camouflage. Yeah, Becky, that was one of the things. I thought we'd gotten through the gridiron of it, and then she said, 
oh, and, and so when I come down, we'll paint the house. And I just sat there and looked at the text and went, oh, bummer. You mean we're going to highlight it? No, we're going to replace it. So, so yeah, we will no longer be the camouflage house. All right. Well, they don't have pizza delivery here, so it's really not a point to stick out like that. <laughs> well, you wouldn't know. They just kept missing your house. Yeah, I know. That's it's camouflage. I play poker. I play poker at that body's house or whatever. And it's got Floyd and all the, you know, all these people. And everyone's like, oh, you live on Black Oh, we're, we're out of Black Now. We're out of Black Now. All these people, I didn't, you know, they knew me vaguely, but they're like, oh, and they go, Floyd goes, the camouflage house. They go, oh, we know where that is. Everyone at the park, seven people well, at the park. Well, no, if game. you live two doors down from the camouflage house, that's how people tell them, that's how they explain how to get to their house. I'm two doors down, down from, from the, the camouflage, camouflage house. house. Yeah, once we change it, they'll be lost. <laughs> My neighbor uh, out on the corner, mm -hmm. uh, like two houses down. The one that's having uh, the perpetual, uh, no, no. No, not the garage sale guy. That yeah. One. The other way. No, the other one. Uh, but, uh, he has a lightning rod in his yard, which I don't know if he owns a house or he rents. You know, you never can tell here. But uh, it's a nice, cute little house, but it's got an old 1900s lightning rod. And I'm going to go. Wait, isn't it? It's, I think it's a flagpole that has a lightning See, rod on no, the top. No, well, I know, but it's not a flagpole. It's well, I, I never looked. Is there a pulley at the top for them to be able to no, hoist the flag? No, oh, it's so just a lightning rod. Interesting. But I want to buy it from him. But I want to, I'm going to go, hey, you want to sell your flagpole? I know she don't use it. We'll use it. And he'll be like. You know, there's two examples. He'd be like, that's a lightning rod. I go, oh, I thought it was a flagpole. So I'll play dumb. But if he doesn't know, then he'll be like, yeah, I don't need a flagpole. Actually, you owning the flagpole will garner him some cash and he will still benefit from you having a lightning rod in the, in the proximity. <laughs> right. No, that's it's it. Not, it. I mean, you're still, it, you're, you're at an advantage being two doors down from a guy who has a lightning rod. Is it won't point, change for him if yeah. he moves it to your property. No. Well, is we, the point of the lightning rod? It's to keep the lightning from striking your house or a tree. Yeah, it's supposed it's, to go to the lightning rod before it gets to your house. So it's it's just a it's right near the peak zone of your your house. So yeah, but we both know that if he ends up selling me this, I will take it. Yeah, and I will put it up at ours, and I'll turn it into a flagpole lightning rod. Yeah, because I will put grilled cheese sandwiches in a flag. <laughs> And then if it ever does get hit by lightning, we're all eating good. But <laughs> it starts to get cloudy. <laughs> Thunderheads fall. Oh. And Becker goes right to the fucking Wonder Bread. And Joby, like, bring more bread. <laughs> this is the trick. You put mayonnaise on the outside. That makes them crispy <laughs> and very unctuous. The lightning rod grilled cheese machine. <laughs> it's going to be amazing. But, uh, <laughs> but we also know that if he does this, which he might. I guarantee you, as you know, Greg, it's a small town, and he's going to get hit by lightning. <laughs> so he's getting hit. And they'll be like, what the fuck did you take your lightning rod down for? Dude! Gary, what's wrong with you? I don't know. That guy wanted it. He goes, of course he wanted it. He promised me a sandwich. <laughs> I'm trying to give him grilled cheese while he's trying to figure out if all his cats are dead. <laughs> yeah, lightning's a fucking weird thing. Uh, when I lived in Florida... Uh, I was never around a lot of lightning. And, well, you know, Florida, you get the, uh, the hurricane alley and you get all that shit going on. And it's, it's inclement weather, which I like. And I would always sit out on the patio. We had a screened in patio over a pool and I would sit out on the patio and I'd just listen to the thunder, watch the lightning. <laughs> one time, Sound like a Bob Seeger song. Yeah. <laughs> thunder Road. <laughs> uh, my girlfriend came home and goes, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> it's like, what do you mean? She goes, well, y anyone knows you, you're not safe just because you're under the eve of the house, you know. And and she was she was right. I looked it up, and like it doesn't matter where you're at. You yeah, can still but that's like God going. Come here, Greg. I need to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, he's so busy. It's like getting audited. Come on. <laughs> Do you know the name of that golfer who was like struck by lightning? He's been struck by lightning twice. I oh, think. was that preacher that uh, that Bill Murray was caddyshacking for <laughs> or caddying for? The, yeah, yeah, the yeah. Reverend in Caddyshack, right? Yeah. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, that's the one. He's having the best day of his life. No, best there's a real life. professional yeah. golfer that got hit twice. Yeah, there's a real professional who's been struck twice. Once when he was like 13, and then once when he was like in his 30s, I think. Wow. At what point do you get and an they, office job? <laughs> there was, I was watching, uh, it must have been the Masters or something, and they were like made a little short feature about it. And his like mom was holding up the shoes he was wearing when he was 13, and the lightning bolt struck him in the head. And came all the way down and like blew out the toes of his shoes. Uh, Lee Trevino and Jerry Hurd 
back in 75 were struck at the same time standing together while playing the Western Open at Butler National near Chicago. Lee, that must Tre- be it. Lee, Lee Trevino, dude. He's fucking PGA fucking Masters. Is yeah. there another one there? This one here? Golfer dies. Golfer dies. Well, that's not Lee Trevino. That's no, for sure. But... Okay, well. But you always want to know their scorecard. Like, why didn't he go in? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, was it, was it worth it? Yeah. Yeah, this is uh, Daily Mail. I think that's uh, UK, right? Yeah, British woman playing golf with her husband in Turkey. <laughs> okay, I don't like a lot of that right yeah, there. That's it. First of all, <laughs> you went to Turkey to play golf? Jesus. She was, was she playing? Turkey's a bowling term. <laughs> Balik Turkey on November 17th. Died 12 days later. Oh, my God. You know, they, it roasts you. Oh it roasts yeah, you from you, the inside. Yeah, you're like burnt marshmallow casing. But they're like, I think you're going to get better. And the doctor's like, no, 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 don't tell her that. I guess no, it's okay to tell her that. No. But die, like, His yeah, liver yeah. looks like don't a you s'more. Be- you saying it is okay for her, but don't you believe that. Not for a second. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the room. I can hear you. <laughs> Uh yeah, Turkey, big golfing destination. Syria, great golf courses. Uh, no thanks. Yeah. Turkey. I, I remember when I was in Europe in '89 that, that they back. I mean, back then you could go anywhere. There was no ISIS that you no. knew about, right? Uh, go. You, know, you must go to Turkey. Good leather. It's like what. Well, you know, all the leather I've wanted, I could get. Yeah, <laughs> anywhere I want. I've never been like you know the quality of this leather just doesn't i've heard stories about a fabled land of, <laughs> of, of 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 unmatched quality in leather i believe it's called turkey yeah never had any desire to go to turkey yeah but it's when you go you go it's when you go to a town and there's a bunch of brown people but their arms are all like bleached white those are leather towns <laughs> but yeah but these are also the places where you go you heard about them growing up and you go i i think i should go like go see the sphinx <laughs> and then we see now that we've exposed everything yeah the sphinx is built right near a shitty city oh, man. i mean it's all just surrounded <laughs> you're like i would feel like such a room to go there and go oh yeah yeah it's right over there it's right over there now where do you want to go you want to go to <laughs> neiman marcus go, no i don't want to go to neiman i take marcus. you we shoot yeah. guns yeah it's good <laughs> ah, it's yes. good you want to go skating we got skating ring <laughs> Yeah, I keep asking Tracy, hey, where do you want to go? We're like, where, like, like bucket list, like, like just to do something. I don't like bucket list, but yeah. it's, it's like, like if you could just go snap your fingers and go, let's go there. And I kept thinking, be like, witch list. I, I know a guy who lives, who worked for Microsoft and stuff, and he worked, he lives in, in China and he would have the hookup. It would be, you would see a different side, side of, China. of China. You wouldn't just go there and get uh, right. emphysema. You'd see the prison. <laughs> well, what, or maybe, you know, they'd have to catch me first, but, uh, she keeps bringing up Greece, and I'm like, God damn it! They just fucking that's not a safe place anymore because of the, uh, Stephanie, the their economy's Stephanie all fucked wants up. To go to Greece? No, I totally do, but I I don't think of that one. I keep thinking because Greece is great because it's got beaches. Yeah, it's no, got, it's you know, beautiful. It's, yeah, but you're right, but they're very their economy vibrant. is fucked. And then you know, just <laughs> you got to just look up the stories of Greek beaches, and then you start going, Wow, a lot of crime. You're kind of vulnerable when you're on a beach in a foreign country because you're you're pretty much naked. Yeah, we had some friends who uh, they're going to go to Costa Rica. And I go, oh, and my brother's like, "Oh, hey, talk to uh, Greg, talk to uh, Tracy. They they've been there. They 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 love it." And we're like, "Oh yeah, no, where are you going?" And they're going to go to Capos. I go, all right. Oh. I go, Ugh. but that's the place where you guys had all the bugs, and the crime rate has spiked in Capos. Yeah, it has. Well, get, go look, go have a ball. Go safari and go do a lot of stuff, yeah. but you got to look where you're going. You yeah. can't just fucking no, go. Don't there's because there's plenty of places in, in Costa Rica that are fine. Yeah, that they don't have people roaming the the uh, beaches right. to rip you off. You, you know, know? Uh, Capos is uh, like in the top. Three. yes, Capos, uh, Gafito. Mm-hmm. Those are the three. Where you Those go. are the three on the yeah, list. Yeah, and Dominical is bad too. Really, Better it's a too. surfer town, but then they built it up, and now it's just surfers and overbuilt. Yeah. And you know how that mixes really well. <laughs> I'm broke. Powder you cake. seem like you have yeah. stuff. You look, <laughs> you look like you had money, so that's why I killed him. <laughs> yeah. No, you know that's the thing. They don't kill you. They just yeah. rob you. But like they hennigan you. Like you, like like. I mean, if, going, you, if you're a, but if you're like a pretty white woman, they do kill you. Ah, uh, not not uh, nearly like, like Jamaica, other countries. He's talking Bahamas and stuff. Yeah, you're thinking Bahamas. Yeah. So Greece. That's a. Uh, yeah, that was a. Uh, so is she is Stephanie planning on going, leaving you behind? Well, 
Uh, no, I think we're going to go. I think we're actually going back to Germany this summer, but then the next, next up is Greece. You were seeing, uh, so, so John, you got to go to the, it's the brothel with all, uh, real dolls. <laughs> I don't, I, I just saw that. And, 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 you know, I thought it like the pictures from it, it wasn't that attractive looking. Oh, a, a, a good gift, gift idea for John before he goes, mm. a bottle brush from Ikea. Oh yeah. Oh. <laughs> you, well, I you, paid you, twice. Yeah. Clean your own. <laughs> Don't ever trust them to clean the real doll, dude. Mm-hmm. That, that lesson learned, fellas. Yeah. That's, that's true. <laughs> do they do, do they do like rentals and is it by the hour? No, it's by, by the, the hour and they like, opened it and, and it's apparently been busy since they opened it. Uh, they got 12 girls working and they, each girl <laughs> does about six. Well, actually one. They all have the same social nine. security <laughs> number. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, it's, it's really creepy. Uh, but yeah, but they said it's, it's catching on. Wow. A real doll. John, how much do you think a real doll costs? Uh, I'm going to say 11,995 and seven cents with taxes. Well, I'll tell you right now, a child mannequin is only $1,300. So, so you always – remember, John, here, us here at the Real Doll Corporation, we want you to know you always have options. Yeah. Uh, how Listen, low can I'm you not, go? I'm not. A, I'm not creepy. I'm just a budget shopper. That's why I got uh, the child size. All right. uh, I could you could you get it to say midget on the receipt? <laughs> so, uh, John, a uh, classic female real doll is fifty four ninety nine. I'm assuming that doesn't include shipping or hair. Is is classic? <laughs> oh, classic has hair. <laughs> it's the millennial it's that does it. Is classic code for for old? What does that mean? I think classic is probably one of their older molds. These are all Milf. silicone molds. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, there's a male real doll, gentlemen. How much more? Five nine fifty nine ninety nine. Wait, so more? Yeah. Oh my god. No, well, <laughs> what say. about equal pay? <laughs> <laughs> and the wicked real doll is sixty seven forty nine, and I think they only have a quote unquote wicked real doll is because it's the thing of threes. You need something to aspire to right. or right, have right. something to go down to. So Right. Does it uh, can do I they, get the do male they... doll with a vagina? <laughs> yeah. Can you mix and match parts? Uh John money is your only limit. I w- I'm I'm gonna say that without being a representative for the real doll corporation. <laughs> that money is the only limit to this. Oh, build, build your, own. your own. Build your oh own. Oh my god, right? I got yeah. a car so like is that. Is it like a car website where you can go and like pick all the options yeah. and the color you want? What color hair you want, John? Uh, oh, oh uh, dude, that looks that looks really that real. Looks fucking real. Wow, that's they always look real on the website. They don't look so good in the box. Yeah, we've been fooled before, right, John? Yeah. I yeah. would poke holes in the box. Jesus Christ. That's so now you gotta remember, like the way they do this is that they have a they have a mold for the body and then the mold for the head is separate. So then they've got all these different variations of that head. So they'll have like Jenny here with the blue eyes and the and the red hair, but then that face might be somewhere else. With different eyes and a different hair and like a different mm-hmm. makeup and stuff. And then the thing is, is that that's, there's a seam that they're not showing here where that head connects to the body. And that's where these guys are real professionals. Yeah. But you also got to realize you can get an Asian doll with blonde hair, big tits. Oh yeah. Nature's miracle. I feel like, I feel, I feel like, we're doing God's work. The people buying these aren't. I feel like you impulse buy it, but then maybe you have to figure out where you're going to keep it. Now, John, 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 John. When I'm in the checkout at Safeway and I see that they have a Boston cream pie, fruit pie, that's an impulse buy. Yeah. <laughs> when you're spending is, yeah. six grand on a life companion. It depends how lonely you are. Yeah. This uh, is called a... I'm just that, saying, Greg, yeah. you don't have to put that Boston cream pie in a room that you don't let anybody in ever. <laughs> You you want to bet? <laughs> <laughs> hey, is that your old Christmas tree? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> so there's a magnetic face. And oh, here's the here's the wicked doll. I, I don't know how to do this though. I guess I got to just Don't pick click one. buy. Is okay, okay, Boston? okay, first of all, okay, right now, we've talked about this in the past that when you hit something, you do a Google search. And then all of a sudden, for the next couple of weeks, yeah, things. Start. This is the first time I've ever been on the real doll site. Okay, and I'm only going to do this one, and we're going to track. And, and I'm going to see many times. how much real doll comes up in the next week or two. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna we'll take uh, Quinn here. This is purely random, and then see if it. Oh, and then you pick uh, the, look at body, the body styles. 
you know, it's weird. Is someone had to figure out that body F was different than petite three. Yeah, but that's I'm so I'm not on the site. But can you scroll to the bottom? No, and look go to the site, John. I dare you. <laughs> is there a re- is there a refurbished section? <laughs> A scratch and dent. <laughs> that's where you. That's where you get the the good deals. The returns. Oh, look! There's yeah. ones without arms. The Venus of Demilos. Yeah. Skin tones, dude. That could be a picture of a girl. Yeah, that's, that's better than anything at Madame Tussauds. No, I Black get it Museum. now. I, yeah. I mean, I I get that because I mean, you can take off the money. You got to figure, John. First, you you say, well, I got it for the carpool lane, <laughs> and that's why I really got it. Actually, but. wouldn't that get you out of a ticket? If a cop saw a fucking real doll, and this well, guy's you committed. Go, are he's, you making fun of my he girlfriend? He obviously doesn't care about paying the ticket because he spent way more on this thing. This guy, he's just a social justice warrior. Yeah. Insert But options. she's still not wearing her seatbelt. Yeah. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> I just assu- I forgot. The, the details. Yeah, the, detail. the devil's in the details. <laughs> you, you, got, you got the pubic hair you wanted, but you forgot to belt her up. Oh, so there's a transgender converter. Oh, wow. Yeah, it looks like a double dong with one set of balls that I guess goes into. Yeah, but yeah. I bet you put crazy glue on it. Well, you don't want it. Nothing sticks to silicone but silicone. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Remember your science, Yeah, Becker. high school science. John, what was the question you were asking me? You said, is there something for, I'm looking here. What was that? You, uh, you, asked, you asked me to scroll down to the bottom for something. Oh, the refurbished section. Uh, but I think it'd be great if, you know, if they had one that could go from male to female uh, on the fly can't go on the fly it's, it, you can only go female to male because it's an right. insert that goes into right. the, the well, jag if I want options Greg I know John you you want to you want to upset the apple cart but there's a production it's, series here that, that has to be you can't ignore this it's like one of those Halloween toys you just squeeze your ear where it says press here on her earlobe and all of a sudden a dick comes out you're like the, oh, this, oh the stress oh. bobby <laughs> no you guys I got it. I figured it out. It's called the best of both worlds model. The front is a woman and you turn it over and the back is a man. What? Just a hairy fucking butthole? (laughs) (laughs) Uncount their hairy butthole? Two fronts. Oh, Two. so it's like a yeah, like a like a, a him and a her at the at the freak show, yeah. like right down the middle, right, right down the middle, but, the, but yeah. front yeah, and yeah. back. Yep. Two yeah, but, fronts, but you don't get a back that way. <laughs> yeah, John, <laughs> you're losing half. I mean, you can't have it all. Well, apparently you can now with the three sided doll. I can't tell what the they the, do look real okay. though. I mean, they what honestly look real. They look dead in the eyes like a stripper. No. They, <laughs> that's for sure. I mean, 100%. That vacant stare. No, I mean, that's... I. If you could make them into strippers. Well, I mean... What if it's half and half, but just the bottom halves smashed together? <laughs> <laughs> you want, like, a short, stubby one? <laughs> no, but then... So it's like the woman's torso, but then a the man's torso where the, you know, head should be. It's a dick. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's so funny because like the, the guy that created this, he's like, this is his, this is his fucking life's no, work. This is his, and passion. he's really, I mean, look at this thing. And John's like, can you put a dump <laughs> truck at the neck? Because I, while I'm fucking it, I want to dump uh, Boston cream pies into my face. <laughs> <laughs> can you put a fridge unit on her shoulders? I said, good day, sir. I don't, <laughs> Listen, good day. Off you the will not ruin my art. <laughs> So okay, he's the he's the uh, he's the Wozniak to my jobs. I, <laughs> I have the fucking business acumen. I know what people want, Greg. Yeah, clearly. Well, I just think the idea that you can buy it with PayPal is sad. You see all those uh those flags? Yeah, those are the those are the fucked up nations. Yep. <laughs> so uh, I I clicked. I totally closed out of that browser, and that's it, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Um. So we'll see what happens. That's a good. The little... internet doesn't forget. No, but I want to see if stuff starts coming up on my Amazon. Oh, there we go, Amazon, right? Yeah, <laughs> real doll. Yeah. Hey, I, I saved so much money on Prime. <laughs> yeah, well, you know. Okay, John, I'm searching used real doll. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, tons of used. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I can't. <laughs> this looks like one of those things you do for CPR. <laughs> you yeah, that, that one's. Get, I'm not. Buy I think... one with low mileage. Oh, John, here you go. Do you have real doll? Do you have, okay, so I'm going back into the real doll site. It's, do you have any used or flawed dolls? Now, t- without reading this, I'll tell you right now. My brother, Ghost Ride Productions, we don't sell seconds, seconds because all we do is custom work. So to have a second 
or so, or to let something out there. You're losing a sale. That's Someone goes, where did you get that? I got it at Ghost Ride. Or where did you get that? I got it at Real Doll. Look at the ears all fucked up. Well, yeah, I got a deal. Well, they walk away going, eh, uh, they're shitty. Right. Yeah. yeah. And the other thing is, is you got to realize new car lots don't have used cars. <laughs> They buy them yeah. and get rid of them as yeah, quick they as crush fucking possible. Yeah, times they even <laughs> crush them. Okay, we usually have a real doll with a surface flop. Okay, they're working in silicone. There's lots of fuck ups because it is very temperamental and it's tough to work with. Uh, and they, so they have something like, oh, we accidentally put sandpaper in the vagina of this one. <laughs> that was a special order. <laughs> It says, we have a surface flaw that we will make available on a first-come, first-served basis. <laughs> it's a cum joke. Uh, we do not sell dolls with mechanical flaws. So if there's a surface imperfection on the skin, which can happen, mm -hmm. there's, when, we, when we're pouring silicone, there's a, we do it like a bucket, right? Like a two-gallon bucket, and it's expensive. And we put it into a vacuum machine and then turn that machine on and that is basically sucking out all, all the of the air bubbles that are in there and then once it once we it's it's risen like a marshmallow and then you you kick the machine off it goes back down but those air bubbles are gone imagine that over an entire body cuz i mean it's a huge mold yeah so they don't sell seconds with mechanical flaws which no airheads yeah <laughs> huh. John, yeah, I can put you on a list. Well, I'll do it right now. I'm putting you on a list, John. Okay, what's your address, To be noticed. John? No, I already got it in here. Yeah, you might as well. It's autofill. Uh, to be notified uh, if there is a, a surface blemish on one of the dolls. Do you have a work email? <laughs> <laughs> a surface blemish. Yeah. But what if you want Zitty McZitty? <laughs> you know, I like that. <laughs> They'll put a retainer. I want a real doll that, I want a real doll that could actually love me. <laughs> They'll put braces and a retainer on it. <laughs> yeah, it's only going to be two years until he gets this off. <laughs> you couldn't have made it with the correct teeth? You nah. can barely see it. It's called Invisalign. You can barely see it, right? <laughs> I don't think you're going to last long at the radio job. <laughs> we should start a company where we drive around and we destroy your exes. Real dolls. <laughs> They're like, you know, I don't want to sell her. I want to be else having her, but I just, I can't do it anymore. It's like, all right, we'll come and destroy it in your driveway, like replacing your windshield. You're like, you're, you're a fake hitman. Yeah. <laughs> we just got a wood chipper. <laughs> we shoot her out the street. <laughs> all right, we're all done. The guy goes, I shouldn't have done it. I, mean, I don't know why I did it. No court of land is going to sue me. No way. No, no court of land is going to bring me to trial. Nope. What have I done here? Yeah. What have I done? I helped a man. I've, helped, I've done nothing. No. Prove it. I didn't kill anyone. Nope. I killed someone's spirit. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, gu I gummed up a rented log jammer. <laughs> let's face it. She killed your spirit long ago. <laughs> you got the real doll to try and get it back. <laughs> oh, and imagine you did a rush delivery on that. Yeah. I, I, you know what? They shouldn't even offer anything but a rush delivery. Because this guy's buying a fucking fake fuck toy. I know. Toy. I it should all be rush. If you do it by ground, which is just the worst way you could do it, it'd be <laughs> three to six weeks. Oh, no. Every day you're out there, nothing. They're gonna, huh. Yeah, they're going to, someone's going to open that box. Hey, hey whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, here's another one from Real Doll. We got to check this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had the to check the box, sir. The, I feel like the more regret you're going to have. No, that's, just, yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. Was just that weird. I feel like people would just move before, the, before it gets to them. <laughs> They're like, I can't live here anymore. I got to go. Six grand. Jesus. Yeah, but six grand. I mean, think about it. It's one and done. <laughs> really? You got a friend? <laughs> <laughs> Let's go in on it. <laughs> hey, as a repeat customer, do I get a discount? Hey, you're a boob guy, right? <laughs> <laughs> Just asking. Uh, now hear me out all the way. <laughs> I'm kind of into watching people fuck my real doll. Would you like to come back to my place? No, no, I would not, sir. Oh my god! I don't care if you're a member of the club or not. What about? Would you guys consider opening a massage parlor with me, and we just have in the back a bunch of real dolls instead of bringing in a shipping container full of women? So all we have to do is massage the real dolls. <laughs> Yeah. How, how are we going to oh. generate money? <laughs> no, you pay. Oh. It's our course on massage. And we have real dolls just laying on the table. And oh, they go in. Yeah, and, yeah. and then we judge them on how they did the massage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're like, yeah, yeah, keep going. Well, just like, I mean, come on. John, have you ever had a massage by uh, someone other than your cousin? 
<laughs> uh, I no. tried not to laugh. <laughs> so uh, if you if you had a massage before, I've had I've had massage. We used to do them here at the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. We had uh, what's her name come down, Anne Marie. Uh, I had massage by uh, men before. Right, oh. it is one of those things where, where well, I didn't know. <laughs> yeah. Nobody ever does. Hey, we, we you that only happens once, and then you always not. ask. Yeah. You always ask. But uh, there is a, a an amount of there's like a, a a dance that's happening. They're moving the towel, the modesty towel. No, there's a dance in your pants that's happening. Well, mm-hmm. John, I thought we were adults. We were going to have a, a frank mm-hmm. and uh, adult conversation here about <laughs> massage. But uh, adults, adults talk about massage boners all the time. I don't know what they you're move. About. They move your body. Were you, you know, Steve Wynn? <laughs> <laughs> they move your body in a way that they've been trained to do that. And that, and having a real doll do that, mm. you would be it would be a little stiffer, I would imagine. Mm. But they would be able to. I'm trying to somehow come up with a pitch. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> they can always get some rummy to lay down yeah. the fucking thing. <laughs> towel or no towel, I don't care because it's gonna be hard yeah. when it's hard. I'm just glad to be out of that truck. <laughs> <laughs> Could you please take off your cowboy boots? <laughs> Never. <laughs> oh. Well, John, I think it's a it's a hell of an idea. Yeah, I mean it's. The seed of an idea. We're not there yet. Sure, but oh, that was the German one. That was what started this. Was the uh, but they said the wives actually sit out in the car and wait for them while they go. Oh, in. Yeah, while they get service. Yeah. Well, yeah, she's been working all day. <laughs> she works hard for her money. Is that weird? Yeah, it's like, totally fucking weird. Yeah, that's Germans right there. I don't. It's sophisticated sh- and super weird. I don't want shitting on me. <laughs> Go, go, relieve yourself. I'll be out in the car. You think broccoli's hard to get out of your teeth? <laughs> get your one time Charlie's. Uh, I have to find that song now that you said it. I'll find it. I'll find it on my. Uh, this is my trick to find music is YouTube. It's all up there. Oh, yeah. Everything. If you want a little clip of something. But uh, Becker brought up a really good uh, point earlier. And I'll. I'll Becker, why don't you start talking about it? All right. I'll so, uh, yeah. So we were driving back from Sierra Vista, buying the new paint to cover up the camouflage. And, uh, Prince came on, uh, not live, of course, but, <laughs> but it was, uh, let's go crazy. And, uh, if you listen to the lyrics of let's go crazy, he literally predicts his own death. Uh, now, Tell me more. Now, now, John, we're all, we, we are three friends who actually, Separately, all saw Prince live, which we did. We never yes. knew about that. Mm-hmm. And his death is something that uh, Becker and I the other day we were drunk in the funhouse here, and we were we were we were about to pull the trigger on buying buying like, one of his uh, signature the, guitars, the one that disappears when he throws <laughs> it in the air. He's on what show is he on? It was, on? it was on the uh, the George it, Harrison tribute tribute, and they were doing "My Guitar Gently Weeps." And when he came out, he was on stage the whole time, but when he came out to perform the second solo, no one was told how it was going to go down. But Tom Petty's there, Jeff Lynn is there, George Harrison's son is there, yep. they got, uh, the, the drummer from Tom, uh, the Heartbreakers is there, tons of people, and it's a fucking amazing we, fucking performance. We talked about, we talked about this a couple weeks ago, right? Yeah, and he yeah. kills. I mean, he just kills. And then. And isn't, didn't we find out, like, Oprah has a guitar or something? No, no. Well, I'll tell you who has the guitar. BH Gate has a guitar for three hundred bucks. Yeah. That looks, it's a knockoff but it's of exact, that guitar. It's exact, oh. down to everything, and free shipping. <laughs> I would go. I would go in. I'll go in on the real one from Oprah, but I don't want a knockoff. Well, the knockoff. We, I mean, John, we, the three of us, know it's a knockoff. Yeah, we know it's a knockoff, but we're selling it as the guitar that disappeared. <laughs> oh, hold on, hold on. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> It's going to be real embarrassing when Oprah comes to the funhouse and is like, wait. <laughs> well, we're not going to still own off. it. We're selling it, John. So J- where, are the, where are the lyrics you're talking about? Sure. Okay. Hello? Yep. Hello? Let's go crazy, right? Is yep. that the song? Yep. We're not going to let the elevator break us down. Okay. Okay. That's the guitar. There it is. Yep. Oh, now it's just Telly. I don't think that's the same one. (laughs) 
all excited, but we don't know why. Maybe it's because we're all going to die. <laughs> Better live now before the Grim Reaper comes and knocks on your elevator door. What? Right here. Motherfucker, that's it? <laughs> I've, I've heard this song a million times. I know, but look, it, it's worse. John, can you hear this? Uh, you guys are cutting out a lot. Hold on. Oh, that is that guitar, dude. Because it's got that inlay down the middle. I, but I had no that? idea that Grim Reaper thing was in there. That's yeah, so weird. Look at it. That's so... Look at down here. Doctor, everything. Oh, here, here he goes. It's coming up after the yeah. solo. We'll hear that one. So, I mean, third, third, third verse coming up here, John. Yeah. And this is when the yeah. doctor, when the doctor gets involved. I mean, well, everybody even knows. Nostradamus got a couple of things. It's how you read it. Well, I mean, everybody knows that he didn't get blood to his banana at the end. <laughs> More of a pale blue. Paisley. Paisley blue. There you go, John. But yeah, it is, well, un- guys are, it is uncanny how many different things he has. That is there's no, no, no criminal charges. I think that news just came out today in the French death. It did. That, that yeah. was uh, it's topical. Yeah, apparently it's not illegal to uh, sell a guy his body weight in drugs. <laughs> it is a weird. Uh, oh, it was the H. S. Anderson Madcap Mad Cat Maple. Yep, is the guitar we and have. It is at. currently listed at well only twenty four thousand dollars, John. But guess what? We can get it for two sixty nine seventy two from DHK. Free delivery. Yeah. So I think we're doing it. I mean, I don't. I mean. It doesn't matter to me. Well, you know how to play it. <laughs> it is one of those things where it's just a badass looking guitar, man. What do you guys think of the idea of uh, getting some real dolls and some Prince knockoff guitars Ooh. and starting a real doll band? Actually, we're going to call it a real doll and a real guitar. Don't say knockoff, dude. That's yeah. a negative. Knockoff is no <laughs> like- so. <laughs> knockoff women, real guitars. Yes. <laughs> Oh, this is good. It's all right, Michael. <laughs> well, actually, it's not. Hold on a second, John. <laughs> My beer is just Mount Vesuvius here. Here. Yeah, I just have to do that. What the fuck? Mine's fine. Of course, that one's been in there longer than all of them. No, I got yours from the boat. Ha, ha, ha. All right. Here we go. Greg's having an icy cold one. <laughs> here, suck on this napkin. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, no, I, I, we just heard that we were in the car and uh, I brought it to bed. I go, that's weird. The elevator thing. And then it's, and then he's talking about prescription drugs. And then he's talking about we're all going to go down. And then he goes, we're all going to die. And then he's coming. He's coming. He's coming. And then I, I have to wonder what his last words were was like, fuck, it's like, let's be crazy. <laughs> and then he just died. This is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I wrote this. <laughs> Well, I mean, he wrote thousands and thousands of songs. Well, I know, one but of one of them, death, one of right? them, sums up the last day of his life yeah. that he wrote. If you twenty years ago, yeah, it was it eighties, right. eight, early eighties, right, mid eighties? Mm-hmm. Well, maybe, maybe he was that good. Maybe he was that good that he already knew, you or know what maybe he orchestrated it. I mean, because he had to go find someone to give him pills. 
He had to take the pills. His, he had to go in an elevator <laughs> and fucking <laughs> crush up a bunch of fucking horse tranquilizers. That's weird. That must be the only place in this place that didn't have cameras. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go in the elevator. Just close the door. Oh, Everybody's man. running around the house looking for him. Have you seen Prince? I don't know. Look under the kitchen cupboards. How many of these fucking pills I got to take? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody running around. They're like, why is Let's Go Crazy playing on repeat? This is insane. <laughs> I don't know, but he's going to be pissed. He should sue Prince. <laughs> <laughs> and the family, how great is it? You read the other thing about the family? Uh, they still haven't settled his estate. It's been two sure. years. That's what's amazing. How that fast time He had flies, no will. You know? But yeah. But the thing is, is the family's been bickering back and forth, and they think half is now gone in legal fees. Half. 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 But it's just as they keep arguing, they're going to go, okay, you each get 35000 It's, it's so like, crazy. Well, what they're saying is we can't determine what his songs are worth, you know, all the unrecorded. And the family's like, well, they're worth this. And they go, well, we'll have to have an expert come in and, and decide what the songs are worth. Kind of like the, uh, you know, the Trump lawyer thing. You go, <laughs> we have a third party look at oh, all the stuff that he never released. <laughs> He had some dogs he did release. So, I mean, the idea you're fighting goes, just get together on this, you idiots. Yeah, you guys could all could have worked this out. Yeah. yeah. The well, lawyers are going, sure. Just, I mean, just the amount of money that the estate can make after uh, someone's died is fucking astronomical. And that's what they're fighting over more than anything else. Well, they, they don't give a shit about, we want to make sure that the integrity of his... Be- no, yeah. no, it's going to be in a shampoo shit. commercial yeah. next week. They just got to get the ink signed. <laughs> it's like when, uh, when fucking uh, don't let your hair go crazy. When Ray Charles, <laughs> when Ray Charles had the fucking Pepsi thing, oh, you yeah. know, and it was like he well, he did it, died, died caffeine free or whatever he did. It was like yeah, whatever, Fuck. whatever he did, he did it great. But then they had to fucking the the announcers had to take that fucking that slogan and they had to say it like he did it in a blues song mm-hmm. or a fucking uh, R and B riff is different than you know. Uh, Bob Costas is saying, <laughs> "Yeah, what was what was the slogan for that?" I'm trying like, to remember what it was because it was a. You know, I'll look it up, but it was one of those. Oh, that's, it was a. That's, that's the taste. Pepsi. <laughs> I don't think it was Pepsi. I think it was diet caffeine free Coke. Uh huh. It was Pepsi. It was Diet Pepsi Super Bowl commercial, and uh, it was aha. Uh-huh. And then the announcer comes on. It's like Diet Pepsi. Uh huh. <laughs> it's like it is. There's, he did the whole. The commercial should stand on its own. We don't need the tag yeah. from the fucking thing. Yeah. So, so I that, what the uh uh her girls are. <laughs> yeah. Where are they today? <laughs> they're, they're the juggies, dude. The juggies of the Pepsi generation. Yeah, that's. I, I just think we're going to get flooded with that now. As baby boomers retire, they're going to start just working them into everything. Well, there's no shame in it now, because I mean the well, Beastie Boys. Shameful. The Beastie Boys basically, when uh, when um, MCA died, his one of his last requests was that it, none of the music be used in a commercial way like that, and the record labels and the movie companies will approach someone and they'll just and they're frank about it. They go, "Would." We'll get this song. Do you want to agree to it and have some choice over how it's used? We will get it eventually. Yeah. And that's just, that's, that, that is the, that's reality. the reality of, of what the, the situation is. And even MCA, I think they, they were objecting to it being in like a Terminator, one of the Terminator movies or something. Well, and, I think they, Sabotage, the Beastie Boy song Sabotage is in like a movie trailer every like, at least every two years, yeah. there's a movie trailer with Sabotage. So it's probably gotten to the point to where it's like, they look, we can't do anything. MCA died knowing that that was the clause, but <laughs> come on, guys. <laughs> yeah. We all got to pay bills. Yeah, remember? But I mean, I think it used to be different, right? Like, bands used to be like, oh, we're never going to sell out. But now, like, every band is like, I hope Apple wants to use any of our songs for whatever the fuck they want. Yeah, they're probably because writing that's it. that's the only way we can make money. Well, Houdini, when he died, he was a big, actually huge at the time. And when he died, uh, he left a thing to his brother that said, when you, die, you know, when, you know, after I die, you can use the equipment, or whatever that I had left. And, but when I'm done, burn everything. Yeah. And you can right now buy the water torture chamber <laughs> <laughs> at auction 
for about twenty four thousand dollars. Yeah, well, Harry said a lot of things. <laughs> yeah, but the thing was, that was it. But he well, was—he's not here. When he? he said "burn it," you guys weren't in the room. He was winking like a uh, exaggerated left eye <laughs> wink. Wink, and that was the sign. Burn it, you know burn, what I mean? You know, burn yeah. it. Get rid of all my paintings. Yeah, no, it didn't. I mean, what the fuck? Big deal. I mean, if you leave this to your family, and then your your offspring and their kid, they can live off of that. Oh, it's nothing. I don't see anything wrong with that. No, it's not. But I mean, it's your wish. I mean, number that's happened with colleges. They leave money for cancer research, yeah. and they go, you know what? We're gonna help. We're gonna build a new football stadium with the money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now they're starting to go back. Donors are starting to come back. You know, and go, we want the money what, back. You know what? You know what? Cancer patients love new scoreboards. Oh, <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Make a wish <laughs> on a touchdown. <laughs> but yeah, then it's, it's, I think it's pretty much normal. But yeah, with celebrity stuff. Uh, how about, uh, what's his name's divorce, uh, sale? Uh, Who? Russell Crowe. Russell Crowe. That was amazing. Oh, yeah. People jumped all over that. That was a great promotion. That was, uh, on, uh, John Oliver just last week. And I, I taped it. I didn't get to see it, but, uh, that was, that was a huge thing. That was, uh, Monday morning. Everyone was watching those clips. Yep. It gave it gave us Alaskans a uh, brief respite from our crime ridden existence. But now Blockbusters, <laughs> for the first time in fifteen years, is going to be robbed <laughs> at gunpoint because they want the yeah. nut cup. There's a line outside of Blockbuster for the first time <laughs> in twenty years. Yeah, but they they've had no you know nobody's robbing them. Yeah, it's like I can get my own Mike and Ike's. I don't need you. Yeah, I don't know. There's going to be a lot of people just like walking through the blockbuster and then walking straight out again. So <laughs> when they see the one thing they wanted, the auction item. Yeah. It's just, they're just going to walk through and be like, Oh yeah, this movie, I should watch it on Netflix later. That It, it is weird when you go to like estate sales, because this is the culmination of like everyone's stuff. Yeah. Like, they're like, yeah. and you're like, like picking it. Nah, I don't really see. Anything. I don't really get it. It's like, well, the, we went to that one. Yeah. Th- that's it. what I was thinking of. Like yeah. the, the, her daughter's, are you know the two gals that are running the the estate sale? They're kind of putting a few things out every week, so they've got like half of a garage sale. But then they're going to keep putting stuff out as they clean out the house. And it is one of those things where you're like basically kicking tires on on stuff that like was part of their mom's life. And Becker's like, I'll give you five. <laughs> How much for this CB? I can't even tell if it works. Yeah, come on. But the other thing is, is is like with that lady too, though. Like I bought that iron. It was a brand new iron. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to go buy one. I got it for four dollars. It's brand sure. new. Sure. And I'm going. It's a new modern iron. And she goes, "Do you want the rest of them?" That's what the daughter <laughs> asked me. I go, "No, I don't want the rest." I go, "Why did she have seven irons?" And she goes, "Yeah, I can't figure that out either." I go, "She's your mother. How often did you talk?" Well, they live in Tucson. They do. Phoenix, so. Yeah, but still. But it is it, like, wh- who needs seven? Fu- like, what? I mean, a sweatshop. I assume a sweatshop needs great. seven. Irons. I think this is how it ends. They're not hoarders. They have memory loss. They just She's forget. like, "Fuck! I need an iron. I forgot." And seven times she did that. Maybe she thought they were disposable. I mean, sometimes, sometimes you're walking through the store and you see a great deal on irons, and you just gotta get an iron, even if you already have six of them at home. But yeah, it's that kind of thing, though. It's weird. John, when you, you go to these estate sales, cause these are the older people. Alaskans don't have a lot of older people cause they either are eaten by bears or, <laughs> or they move. Or they move. Yeah. They yeah. Go, I'm getting out yeah. of here. But yeah, it's weird to see it. I mean, they have a Victrola and then they have one of those Crosby <laughs> record players. Yeah, yeah. They were both side by side. I'm like, at what point did you not want to use the Victrola? There's a large space in between when you had the wax disc from Edison Company yeah, yeah. <laughs> and when you were like <laughs> dubbing your uh, cassettes onto a CDR. Uh, I mean, come on. There's a lot of technology. Be- I mean, it is one lifetime, yeah. but there's a lot of technology between there. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's just, I think that's how we end. It's just, you end up with duplicates of everything except for yourself. I want to hear Eminem on a wax cylinder. <laughs> oh, would that <laughs> be cool? We spin it up. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the real shady. <laughs> 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 that would be amazing. <laughs> Got to keep cranking. Am I cranking too yeah. fast? I don't know. <laughs> That's a great idea. Yeah, everyone's done LPs, but no one's done wax cylinders. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, I, yeah. Oh, by the way, uh, we should be getting it any time now. 
Uh, the Doug Sanop store has been down because we've been out of town and I'm going to bring it back up hopefully by next middle of next week when this goes out. And, uh, yeah, the, uh, the store will be back up with a bunch of new stuff and I've got, uh, I'll, uh, I'll blast it out to our, our listeners at near the wild, um, when they arrive, but we're doing VHS cassette tapes of, uh, his latest, uh, release, which was the, Papa Vodka presents, which Doug is a Stanhope really good special. in the funhouse. Yeah. yeah, so I've got the twenty minutes, and it's taken me four months. I still don't have shit from the guy. I remember at one point the band Black Pussy told me, "Oh, there's a guy in Chicago. He'll dupe onto VHS." And literally, that was you can't find anything, right? It just it just doesn't happen anymore. So I kept emailing back and forth. This guy, yeah, yeah, we'll do it, we'll do it. And then I'm like, so I haven't talked to you in a couple of weeks. What's What's the status? He goes, well, I'm having trouble finding the blank tapes, <laughs> and I'm going to spring break this weekend, so you're going to have mean, to call me next week. <laughs> spring, a great spring break over, <laughs> overrode your order. <laughs> did you did you tell him to go to an estate sale? <laughs> That's where they have all the fucking blank VHS Blank tapes. VHS? You, you know what? Fucking, you're right. I didn't even think about that. Mm-hmm. But I, they, I, might not be, they might not be blank. They might be marked like Wheel of Fortune. April seventh, nineteen eighty four to nineteen ninety two. But, but I want that. You, I want to just put Doug on the there. first twenty. Yeah. And then when yeah. it's when you're done with that, it you, just it does that thing where the weird lines go across yeah. the screen, and then all of a sudden it's Chuck Woolery or on home, the old wheel or home movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bach mitzvah. So anyway, yeah, those will be available uh, coming up. And uh, fantastic. We should get, Becca. You got also couple- there's uh, there's probably a couple near the wild T-shirts kicking around. So get those orders in. Oh yeah. Thanks, John. The VHS of t-shirts. The VHS of t-shirts. The wax cylinder of merch. <laughs> There's got to be us. only a couple left. So oh, yeah. only a few left, so get it in. So, uh, Becca, you got to come up with your song, with your joke, your Daniel Oh, Trejo yeah, joke. Daniel Trejo. You're going gonna to do it after we sign off. No. Daniel, just, I'm Daniel, you Daniel Trejo. <laughs> Daniel. I do want to say, if you want to get in touch with us, uh, near the wild podcast at Gmail and... Uh, yeah, someone someone use it for good. Some people are using it for bad. <laughs> if you have a question, suggestions, or uh, I don't know, fucking complaints, uh, I can easily throw them in the trash there. That <laughs> do it. We'll treat you like a real doll. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you've listened to another episode of Near the Wild. I'm Matt Becker, sitting in the Funhouse in Bisbee, Arizona. <laughs> I am John Norris, basking in the uh, couple of weeks of sunlight we get here in Alaska. And this is Greg Shaley, also in the fun house, back home in Bisbee, Arizona, where I belong. See you next week. You've been listening to the Near the Wild podcast with Matt Becker, John Norris, and Greg Shaley. Recorded in Anchorage, Alaska on Matt Becker's Backyard Bus. Produced and engineered in Bisbee, Arizona by Shaley. So here's the joke. Danny Trejo, what, he's five foot, what, how tall? Like five, six, five, seven. Five, six, five, seven. That's not an essay. That's more like a paragraph.